Welcome to Skybreak Church. We would love for you to check us out online or on our app to share your story or to support us financially. We know that this message will be a blessing to you and your life. Thanks for joining us. Our lives. Well, good morning, everybody. Give somebody a high five and a big smile. Tell them how good it is to see them in church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> if you are new to Skybreak, I want to extend a welcome personally from Janet and I and from Pastors Nate and Kendall and our whole family and team. We're so happy you are here. And I just love our Skybreak family. Hello, everybody. Y'all out there? <laughs> I like it when I can go to the grocery store and hug a brother. <laughs> right down here in the front row. What aisle were we on? We were on the, on the chips aisle. I don't know. Probably shouldn't have been on that aisle. <laughs> The coffee eye, we'll blame it on coffee, right? It's just great to be a part of a family. And Janet and I so appreciate our family here at Skybreak. And it means so much to us, every one of you. And it's summertime, people are enjoying some, some hot weather. <laughs> we had a couple of nice days, but that's over. And we're back to the real temperature now. So we hope people, those of you watching today, wherever you are, maybe you're tuned in on vacation and we're happy you're here. Maybe you're tuned in from a hospital bed. Well, I'm glad you're watching today. Can we welcome everybody online, all of our military people, wherever you might be? Come on, we're so happy you're here today, <clears throat> joining with us. And so I want to take a few minutes, first of all, celebrate with everybody that's going to be baptized today. Today is Baptism Sunday. <laughs> and so if you've not taken your next step to be water baptized, we're prepared for you. If you didn't think about it before you got here, that's okay. We have everything you need, and I mean everything that you need to be baptized today, and so we want to have you think about that and make plans at the end of the service today. You can do so. We'll give you instructions on where to go, and so that's uh, it's a special time. I was nine years old when I was baptized. I was a, I was a sinner. Man, I've been living worldly. Hey, Y'all listen to me. I had robbed and stolen bubble gum. Oh, let's see how many honest people we got in the room. Anybody ever stolen a piece of bubble gum? Raise your hand. Come on, let's see how many honest people we got. Thank you so much. I felt really bad, and I had to, I had to, be, I had to repent and get saved, and I got baptized. <laughs> and <laughs> Anyway, we won't go any farther than nine years old on that story, right? We'll leave the past the past. Aren't you glad the past is back there, and we're, we're walking into a new future today? And baptism is part of that. Baptism is the burial, Scripture says, of the old person. And so I urge you to do that today. Maybe you're saved, maybe you've given your heart to God, and you're still wrestling with some stuff. Baptism will help you be free from some things, because it'll cut off some things in your past. There's a spiritual significance. All right. Many of us know that God is calling us to something more, but we don't know where to start. And often our challenge is, can we leave our lives of good enough behind so we can embrace a life that is greater? I love what Jesus said in John 14. He said, I'm telling you some truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing, and not only will he do what I've been doing, but he will do even 
greater things. I love that verse. So the question is, can I embrace a life that is greater than what I've seen so far? Greater than the labels you were given when you were young. Greater than the cynicism you might be settling into as you get older. Greater than a life spent aimlessly wandering on social media in space, cyberspace. Greater than earthly success that brings only emptiness and no eternal reward. Greater than the shame from the sins of your past. Greater than the abuse you suffered at the hands of people that you once trusted. Greater than the hell you've been through in the trials of your life. Perhaps even greater than the dreams you've dreamed for yourself so far. Maybe God will call you to make a major change in your life. Or just maybe he simply wants you to live your life presently with greater passion and a brand new outlook. You know, I find over and over again that the number one enemy of the greater life God has for me is me. To help us find out more about the greater life God has for all of us, I want us to read 1 Kings chapter 19. And it's, we're not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to read a few verses. And it's the story of Elijah and Elisha. So if you want to follow along, we're going to talk about this story today. Verse 19 of chapter 19 begins, Elijah found Elisha and he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. Elisha himself was driving the 12th pair. And so Elijah went up to him and he threw his, his mantle, his cloak around Elisha. Immediately Elisha left his oxen and he ran after Elijah, Elijah and he said, let me go kiss my father and mother goodbye. And he said, and then I'll come and go with you. Go back, Elijah replied. I, they're your parents. I've not done anything for you. Go, go back to them. I'm new. You don't know who I am. You may have heard a few things, but you're going to follow me. They're the ones who raised you. Go back. But when he went back, notice the scripture. He may have kissed his father and his mother, but he did something else. He took his yoke of oxen and he killed them. I don't even know he's getting ready for a barbecue. He killed his oxen and he burned the plows he had been plowing with. And he used it as firewood so he could cook the meat. And then he gave the meat to everybody in the community, all of his family, all of those around. They ate, the Bible says. And then he set out to follow Elijah and he became. Everybody say became. You can become something that you're not right now. He said, well, I kind of like where I'm at right now. But don't stop where you are. There is more you can become. There is more God has for you. There is more in front of you. You need to keep pressing on. God's bigger than you ever imagined him to be. He's got things for your life. You never, I'm talking about even those of you who've served God like I have for a long time. Don't ever stop and don't ever get stagnant and think I plateaued. God has more. You can become more. Come on, somebody. So, the first step to finding your greater life is to do exactly what Elisha did, and that is to burn the plows. That's what I want to talk to you about for a few minutes today. That's the title of my message, Burn the Plows. Everybody say, Burn the Plows. Now, let me give you a, a, an explanation. I believe that there are three invitations that if we accept them, they will set the stage for living a greater life and the one that Jesus has said we could live. Here's the first invitation. It's an invitation to a higher calling. Everybody say higher calling. It's important to point out what Elisha was doing when Elijah the prophet threw his mantle on his shoulders. Uh, Elisha wasn't expecting it, right? And there's nothing in the scriptures to suggest that 
that he did something to deserve it. Elisha was plowing with oxen in a field very far away from any signs of great significance when one day God's greater calling began to to be released in full force in his life. God starts talking to Elijah about Elisha, but here's the thing. Elisha doesn't know the conversation is happening because he's just doing his thing, plowing in the field. I believe that here today, some of you came who who have been just doing your thing, plowing in a field, just going about your life, unaware of the reality that God is conspiring greater things for the ways he wants to use you. And you're unaware he wants to bless you and show himself real in your life more than he ever has before. Don't settle where you are. Plowing behind oxen, uh, that's tedious work. We have tractors today. But for Elisha, think about it. Every day, every day plowing behind that oxen, the scenes and the sights and the smells were the same. Now, it was good steady work, but it was also monotonous. Every day when Elisha got behind the plow, his view was the same. It was the backside of a farm animal. That was his life. Think about it. It wasn't bad. It's just that sometimes, even though the life you're living when it's pretty good, God is conspiring in heaven to bring you into something that's even greater for his glory and for his honor. He has a higher calling for you. Some of you are asking about your life right now. Is this all that there is? Is I've been doing this a long time. I've been driving that truck, and I've been, I've, been, I've been cleaning those teeth as a dental hygienist, and I've been cooking meals at the cafeteria, and I've been, I've been doing what I do. Is there anything more? Is there something more? Because monotony has set in, and you're wondering what's next. What else is there for my life? So here's the thought. The the, the message you may get from me so far, if you're not really listening, is that if you're working a steady job in whatever department that might be in, that God has something uh, greater for you than you're wasting your life. That, That might be what you're hearing. But that's not my message. It's not that God calls us to do something different. It's that he calls us to do what we're doing in a different way and for a different reason and with an entirely different sense of passion. So when I say greater, some of you hear better. No, God wants something greater for your life. Maybe he's not calling you to quit your current job for something better. Maybe he's calling you to show up on your current job with a greater sense of destiny so you don't slip behind the plow and mindlessly go through your life every single day, missing the opportunity that God's putting all around you. (laughs) He's not calling you to leave your husband and find a better one. You heard that, Janet, didn't you? (laughs) Maybe he's calling you to engage your husband's heart with a greater love so he becomes better than he even knew he had the potential to be because of your greater love for Jesus. Maybe he's not calling you to step out into something new, but to step up right where you are. What we know about God is this. He calls different people to do different things. Uh, Aren't you glad for the truck that picks up trash going down your street? Aren't you glad for the people who keep water coming to your house? Aren't you glad for the people who work on the electrical lines? Aren't you glad for the people who can fix a toilet? Aren't you glad for the people who drive the trucks, who supply the grocery stores, and the stockers who put the stuff on the shelf? You think milk comes from the, from the grocery store. It started somewhere else. And there's no shame in doing the same thing every day. 
But there is a greater calling God is sending out to every believer who has settled into spiritual survival mode or comfortable complacency or maybe it's even miserable mediocrity. You settled for a life behind the plow. You go to church, you do your thing, and you stare at the same thing, ox tails. <laughs> you get up on Monday morning and you, you get behind the plow. You go back into your home that's smaller than you'd like it to be with unpaid balances on three or four credit cards and a fake smile on your face trying to act like you're having fun. But the smell of the oxen and the view of their rear end is blocking your visibility of seeing any greater future in sight. So now that I have your attention, I want to talk to you. I believe God is holding open the door to a life that's greater. He's holding open the door to a higher calling. In fact, Jesus said, anyone, everybody say any. Everybody say any. Many, many, mo. Any. That means me. That means you. Anyone who has faith in me will do greater things. Any single mom, any middle school student, any oil field worker, any banker or lawyer or construction worker or plumber or real estate guru or chef who's been working at something but it doesn't seem to be working for you, God can start working in you right now in a greater way if you'll just open your eyes, if you'll just look around you, if you'll just be receptive, if you'll just have faith in me, he says. Don't wait until the, those credit cards are paid off. It's not when you get the kids out of the house. It's not when you have a baby because everybody else has one and you don't feel like your life is kicked in yet. It's not when you can afford to send the kids to another school or when you can buy your wife a nicer car. It's not when your income hits a certain threshold. If you'll receive it, God wants to pass a mantle onto you just like Elijah threw his mantle on Elisha. God wants to throw his Holy Spirit over you, and when that happens, everything changes. Every bit of your perspective, the job you do, the mundane task that you seem to have slipped into behind the plow, everything will change because you'll have a higher calling. No matter where you've been or what you've done or how much time you've wasted, it doesn't matter if you're too inexperienced. It doesn't matter if your body's starting to fall apart because you hit an age, I don't know what that is, that you think is too late. I'm not there yet. Just want y'all to know. Greater things start right now. Come on. Greater things start right now. Come on, somebody. Greater things start right now. This is your higher calling to step up right where you are. Okay, so what does it mean to be great for God? Does it mean to play for professional sports? Or does it mean to smuggle Bibles into a third world country? Or does it mean playing professional sports and smuggling Bibles into a third world country in the off season? When the average believer is thinking, like most of us in this room, I'll be just doing good if I just get to heaven. I mean, some people like, I, I don't know if my pearly, if my mansion is going to be close to Jesus or not, or if it's going to be on the outskirts of town. But as long as I, if I just barely make it in the door shuts, I'm like, hallelujah. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody? I know some of you are thinking like that. Like, man, the life I've lived, I'll just be glad to say I'm here when the roll is called. I may be in the back of the room. No, come on, somebody. You know what's interesting about this story? When Elisha set out to follow Elijah, for years there is no recorded miracle with his name on it. There's no main stage moment where he stands up and announces, I'm officially greater for God today. See it? There's my badge. Got my badge right here. No. In fact, he actually disappears into obscurity. Why? Because sometimes the greater thing God will call you to do isn't something where more people are going to see and recognize your contribution, but where less people will see and recognize your contribution. 
This church is full of moms who know what it feels like to be caught between knowing there's a higher calling, but you're stuck in a lesser life. And you pin stuff on Pinterest that you're going to get around to with your kids one day. But while you're doing it, they're yelling so loud and they're ticking you off. And you're saying, shut up, because you're trying to pin things that would be interesting for you and them to do together like a good mom. Shut up. I'm working for you. <laughs> Come on, I'm real today. This is real, right? Y'all know it. Yeah, you got Christian music playing, but it's like, I didn't even hear that Christian song. I was just ticked. Jesus didn't save you, listen to me, he didn't save you for the stagnation of good enough. He doesn't call me from, to, to, to a form of greatness according to the world's standards. Instead, he calls me out from my life behind the plow into a journey of following him into a higher calling. Now, I can't say for sure where following God's greater plan for your life is going to lead you. But we can help you discover some of the things God might be calling you to do and how to start where you are with what you have until God turns it into something greater than you could ever imagine. We developed Growth Track for this very reason to help you discover your purpose and begin following the greater calling God has for your life. I don't know where that will lead you for certain, but I can tell you where it starts. It starts with accepting God's invitation to His higher calling for your life. You think God called you to have a job. He called you to be in ministry for him, a higher calling, and the job is just a means to allow you to do what God's called you to do. That's invitation number one. Here's the second invitation. God invites you to a deeper surrender. Deeper surrender. You know, Elisha doesn't just pray a prayer with when, when the mantle falls on his shoulders, he does something significant. He, he makes sure that there's nothing to run back to. Let me show you. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I'll come with you. Now, he's not having second thoughts, as some often think. He's dealing with the reality that once he follows forward, there ain't no turning back. He gets it. This is goodbye to everything I've known. This is total surrender. Because when you say yes to Jesus and you invite him to be your Lord and Savior, you're kissing goodbye to the world. And you're saying, Jesus, you're my prize. You're my treasure. You are the greatest thing. You are the priority. Are you listening to me? You're saying you are the priority of my heart from this day forward. So for a man who had spent his life behind a plow, Elisha does something quite remarkable. He kills his oxen and then burned the plows to cook the meat and he gave it to the people and they ate. Now, I've been around cattle. I understand their value. I, I can understand killing the animals. I mean, that's, that's some prime steak right there going on. I mean, this is high, this is high living. I mean, everybody got fed. I, I understand that. But to take his instruments, the instruments of his livelihood, and use them for firewood so you can grill the auction, that seems irresponsible. I mean, if you're really super spiritual, you might have done the same thing Elijah, Elisha did. But I'm a, I'm a business guy. I'm like, if God called you to quit your business, you wouldn't burn the building. Yeah, see, some of y'all out there in spiritual land, I'm in reality here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell the building and get some money and bring an offering to the church or something. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, some of y'all are like, what did he say there? What was that? I missed something here. Bring an offering to the church. Sell the, what are you talking about? <laughs> y'all with me here today? Yeah. Not total surrender. You, you wouldn't burn the building. You'd sell the business, you know, and all. But he burns the building. This is a picture of 
total surrender. Jesus, the Son of God, is walking up and down the aisles of this church right now, in and out of rows, and he's touching people saying, I'm talking about you. You're mindlessly plowing. That's you. You're stuck where you are. That's you. You're numbing yourself to the reality of what God wants to do through you, but you're not entering into it. That's you. You're testing the water, but you're but you're not stepping in. That's you. He's talking to you. You want to launch into a greater life, but there's no change. You're still the same. You constantly find yourself back in a life that's just good enough, wondering what. What went wrong? I would suggest that the reason many people never exit out of spiritual mediocrity and advance into greater things is because we picked the wrong starting point. What do you mean? The greater life God is calling you to live doesn't start by building your dream house. It doesn't start when you get your dream job. It doesn't start by drawing up blueprints for the life that you want. It begins when you burn the plows of the life you have lived and you offer yourself to God as a blank slate. And you say, here I am. Many people never get to greater because we don't leave good enough behind. Some of you are trying to live for God with one hand on the plow and one hand reaching out for what God has to offer. So that if this God thing doesn't work out, I'll have something to fall back on. When are you going to throw yourself into the will of God? I said, when are you going to throw yourself into the higher calling and the total surrender to say, Jesus, you can use me right where I am in a greater way than I ever dreamed possible. Help me to quit looking at what I'm seeing every day, mindlessly doing what I do and falling into the pit of mundane and and normalcy. But let me realize there's a bigger calling and there's a surrender you're asking me to step into. And when I do, there's greater things that will begin to happen in my life like I never dreamed possible. Possible. Listen, God didn't bring you here so you could go right back into the same way you were living before you got here. I'm, I'm here to say today, we need to burn some plows in our hearts and in our affections. So, so God is inviting you to a deeper surrender. Now, here's my, here's my third invitation, okay? Sermon going okay so far? Are you hearing it today? If you're hearing it, say yes. The third invitation, higher calling, deeper surrender, greater things. Greater things. You know Elisha went on to do uh, twice as much, twice as many miracles as Elijah? You know, God is the only one who will call you higher and then tell you the way to get there is by going deeper into, into your dependence on him. Jesus is the only one who said, anyone who doesn't take up his cross and follow me can't be my disciple. What does that mean? Well, God will love you, but it just means your life's going to continue to be limited until you set fire to whatever has tethered you to your old life. What is that? You know What is it that's tethering you to a past and you know that that's keeping you from moving forward and you're like, I'm I'm trying to hold on to both. You need to let go of the past and you need to let God take you into a new place. Now, I know what I'm talking about because as somebody who has has great parents and a great family. I grew up in church. I thought I knew what it meant to belong to God and to be a Christian. I was, I was young, but I had, I was very focused at a very young age. I was very entrepreneurial at a very, at 15, I'm working for myself, making my own money, going to school. I put myself through college. I knew I I didn't have any help from anybody. I'm not saying that dissing anybody. I'm just saying I work. I did. I I was, I had that. Um, I didn't, I never worked for the other person. I got to drive. And there was a moment in my life where the mantle of God hit my shoulders and I sensed I knew it was the call of God in fact I ignored the call for a while even though I knew what I was supposed to be doing I still had this drive in me that was trying to take me somewhere else 
And it seems a little strange for me to even talk about it now, but, but at the time when the mantle came, it was just an impression. I was 15 years old. It was just an interpretation that became God's invitation in my life. I was, I was young. Even though the life I was living was pretty good, I, mean, I, you know, I was only 15, God was calling me to, to an impact that was greater than what I could see. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't see all of that. I just knew I had this drive on the inside of me. When that mantle hit me at that age, I know exactly when it happened. I could take you. In fact, the building that it happened in still exists. I could take you to the building on the, on the exact road. I could show you exactly where that. I could probably stand within 10 feet. That building has been relocated now. It's at a different site. I could probably, I could probably still stand within 10 feet of where that. I know that moment. And it can happen for you at age 16. It can happen at age 26, at age 46, at age 76. It doesn't matter. And in some ways, it doesn't just happen to you once. It happens every day. Every day I sensed that calling and that um, I wanted to be in business. I knew God, had call- I wanted to be a business person, but God said, I want you to build the church. And I had to wrestle with that. Every day God gives you an opportunity for a calling that is higher, for a surrender that is deeper, and for a purpose that is greater. And you have to decide, am I going to let that happen? Am I going to go for that? I'm saying go for it. When that happened, God gave me an instruction, and he changed everything. And he told me to toss my plans for a career in business and make plans to build a church. Now, I didn't know what that looked like. But here we are, 26 years old, Janet and I moved to College Station. Well, she was already 27. (laughs) I just want to make sure y'all, if you don't know, she's older than me. And all that means is I'm a very smart man, and she's one awesome woman. Oh, y'all didn't even think that was good. There you go. That's not good. <laughs> 26 years old, we loaded up with our firstborn son who's leading worship on this stage as one of our pastors. He was three. Many of y'all know the story. And, and, and we came. Here's what I'm trying to say. You know the worst part about not burning the plows? And the worst part about holding on to the life you're living, not giving it to God, saying, here it is, Lord, is nothing changes. Boredom sets in, and every day it's the same thing. Life behind the plow. I guarantee you, there's somebody here who God is trying to get you to burn something emotionally, Relationally, I don't mean set them on fire. (laughs) Y'all got that right, okay? Pastor says go burn them. (laughs) No, but you know what? You might need to delete them out of your phone and stop running to them every time they call. You know, there. I'm sure there's somebody in here who needs to move out. Because the person you're living with isn't your husband or your wife. And you're shacking. And you're excusing. And it's a plow. Now now listen, God loves you. God's not going to hate you if you don't move out. But there is something that's greater that's being blocked by the lesser thing you won't let go of. And if you'll surrender it today, and if you'll burn the plow, there's a new life waiting for you. Now, while the applause of all those people in their hearts <laughs> die down because you're not living with somebody that ain't your spouse, I want to speak to the person who's holding on to the plow of unforgiveness. Maybe it's the plow of bitterness, a plow of excuses, a plow of blame, because a plow can be anything. Elisha didn't go burn his stash of cocaine. It it wasn't a bad thing that he burned. It was a good thing that was keeping him from something greater. From finding the freedom God had for him. So, maybe you need to burn the plows of your past and give Jesus a chance. 
Maybe you need to start that journey to know God. Maybe you need to take that next step and go public with your faith today and get baptized right now, right after this. Bearing your past in the waters of baptism. We're prepared. We got everything you need. No excuses. Maybe your next step is to attend growth track. We talk about it. Some of you have been listening to it for a year, still haven't went. What are you waiting for? We want to help you discover your purpose and why God put you on this earth. Why not jump in all, all the way? Why not jump in full force? Maybe your next step is to join a small group. Well, I don't want to be telling people all my stuff. No, but you better tell somebody your secrets because you're, you're only as healthy as your secrets are, and you need somebody you can trust. And you need somebody you're in relationship with who loves you and can look at you and say, hey, babe, let's get it right here. I'm, I got you back, but we got we to gotta be accountable to somebody. Yes, you're going to leave. Uh, you're going to have to invest something into this. But I can promise you this. Just like Elisha experienced a double portion of the spirit Elijah unleashed in his life, I guarantee you when, when you move forward into the greater thing, You'll never regret one time the plows you burned before you left them behind. Elisha never regretted burning the plows, ever. So my final question, why don't you burn the plows today? Whatever you're holding tightly, when you let it go to God, you'll discover God never comes into your life to take something away unless he plans to give you something greater in its place. And he is that greater thing. I said he is that greater thing. And before we pray and we sing together, we're about to do that right now. I want you to remain still. I want you to remain at at your seat. But here's what I I want you to do. Those of you who know God is speaking to you about something greater he wants to do. And you're saying, today, I want to burn the plow that's keeping me from receiving God's greater things in my life. I want to invite you as you make that decision to stand right now, right where you are as a step of faith. Come on. And as we sing and as we worship, you're like, I'm going to burn the plow. I'm ready to move on. I want to receive the higher calling. Come on, that's right. Just keep on. If God's speaking to you, we're going to sing and we're going to worship. And you just stand and you begin to turn it over to him right now. Come on, just turn it over. Jesus, here it is. Here's my life. Here's my past. Here's my, here's what I'm holding on. I let it go. Come on. Come on. Just keep standing. Just keep standing. Just turn it to him. Beautiful. Beautiful. I don't want mundane anymore. A new life. Come on, a new life is born. Receive it right now. Receive it right now.
every head bowed and eyes closed. The altar is right where you stand, right where you are right now. Thank you for responding all across this room. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to receive your higher calling. God, I pray for that in my life. Pray it for, for your life right now. I pray for the higher calling. Lord, I totally surrender to you everything here today. Everything in my life, I give it to you so that I can receive the greater things you have prepared for me. In Jesus' name, Lord, I declare that over every person standing right now, leaving the past and moving into the greater thing that you have for me. I trust you. I receive it. I receive it. I want to pray a second prayer right now as you remain with your heads bowed just for a moment. If you're here today and you have never given your heart and your life to Jesus, maybe you did that somewhere in the past and you've walked away, I'm, I'm asking you as well, why not give Jesus your whole heart today? Jesus died on a cross 2,000 years ago for every one of us, for our sin. Sin means to miss the mark. And without Jesus and God's grace and mercy in our life, we're going to end up in a place we never intended to go. But Jesus has prepared heaven for us. And he's got a greater life for you starting today if you'll just receive it. So while your heads are bowed, I want to lead you also. Those of you who want to invite Jesus into your life, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. And I'm going to ask you to pray out loud with me this prayer so that I know who I'm praying with. Would you just slip up your hand if that's you right now and say, Pastor, I want that new life. I want a new journey with Jesus. I want to know God. I want to make sure I'm ready to go to heaven. I want to make sure I'm saved. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand right now across the room? I want to pray with you right where you're standing. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for the courage to lift it. Thank you again. Thank you. Fantastic. If that's you, I want to start that life or I want to rededicate my life. Thank you so much. Just lift your hand to Jesus. Take a moment. Take a moment. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. Thank you so much for that. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Thank you. You can put those hands down. Why don't we give a hand clap for everybody who raised their hand right there. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Everybody just remain at your seat for a moment. Would you pray with me? The most important part of the day is right now. Repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me of my sin and take away my past. I invite you into my world to be my Lord and leader. From this day forward, I'll do my best to honor you and serve you. Thank you for saving me by your grace. I love you and I give you my life. Amen and amen. Come on, a big celebration. One more time, everybody. For everyone who prayed that prayer, you may be seated, please. We'll dismiss you in just a moment. Please be seated. Do you receive the word of the Lord today? God bless you.